Hello again. Welcome back. We're here with another entry into our sonnet series, looking at some great sonnets um, and sonnets of all sorts and celebrating the art form. Um, I'm very happy today to have a piece from Yeats and we'll be discussing um, what makes this poem difficult. Um, it is the fascination of what's difficult. A great little quip. Um, Yeats had these, um, you know, great signature lines, no country for old men, those types of things that kind of entered, um, entered English and, and stay with us. And, and you hear them repeated and come up in speech again and again and again. So let's look at the origin of the fascination of what's difficult, um, which is a sonnet. Um, there is a feature of this sonnet that we'll discuss uh, when we get there, um, so stay tuned for that. The fascination of what's difficult. The fascination of what's difficult has dried the sap out of my veins and rent spontaneous joy and natural content out of my heart. There's something ails our cult that must, as if it had not holy blood, nor on Olympus leap from cloud to cloud, shiver under the lash, strain, sweat, and jolt, as though it dragged road metal. My curse on plays that have to be set up in fifty ways, on the day's war with every knave and dolt, theater business, management of men. I'll swear before the dawn comes round again, I'll find the stable and pull out the bolt. So before we dig into some of the special technical features of this, um, let's just um, look at this opening. Um, so many sonnets that we've discussed in this series have a, um, kind of a negation or rhetorical opening. Uh, this poem does not. It's going to drive straight ahead like that um, cult. Uh, the fascination of what's difficult has dried the sap out of my veins and rent spontaneous and natural content out of my heart or content out of my heart. Um, so that's a fairly direct, straight ahead um, statement of the issue, of the problem in that octave. Um, Yates is saying, um, you know, um, it's just really been very, very difficult. And although I'm attracted to difficulty um, and um, it's intriguing to try challenging things, um, you know, I just, uh, I, I just gotten to be too stressful and too hairy. Um, then, of course, we introduce the, this um, conceit or, or central metaphor of the poem. There's something, something ails our cult, so something um, our, maybe he's talking about his or, or collective, like all people might have this problem. Um, as if it had not holy blood. Um, so I think Yeats is dealing with this thing like ambition, right? So ambition lifts us to try to leap from cloud to cloud on Mount Olympus um, or, you know, um, contend with the gods, right? So that, that's, that's inherent in, in ambition and, and trying to do difficult things. But he says, you know, I think a little bit of a, um, ironically or a little bit of a self put down here you know you might be dreaming simply too big it might just might not be possible and you know you're you're made from humble stuff like the rest of us um because this this conceit here says um um it's supposed to be this sacred holy um godly horse um but in fact it's just um refuses to be tamed, refuses to, to concede to anyone, and um, shivers under the lash, um, and as though it, it, it dragged road metal. So I'm not sure what the road metal is. Um, maybe um, a broken cart. Um, maybe there's, there's detritus in the road. Um, I, I'm not sure. Uh, but it's it's a great um, great image there of um, of this um, you know kind of lofty high flute and horse um, just like um, dragging a um, piano behind it you know um, so um, the that line my curse on plays we go the from the road metal to curse my curse on plays so the speaker's now cursing 
um, the stuff that he holds dear. Um, Yates, obviously, um, readers at the time would know this, um, was known first and foremost at this time, perhaps, as, as in his involvement in the Irish theater as a playwright. Um, he was very keen to advance his, his status as, as a playwright and the status of, of the Irish um, as playwrights and as um, having, a, having a central place in the world as, as um, a place to celebrate theater. Um, and he derived a lot of publicity from this. So he, it's a lot, he put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into building, um, building a, a national theater. Um, my curse on plays that have to be set up in 50 ways on the day's war with every knave and dolt. Okay, so we can all, you know, anyone who's worked in any type of capacity, whether you're working at a Starbucks or, or you know, whether you're working um, in the boardroom, you know, um, Day's war with every naive adult is, is something true to human experience. Now he makes this specific theater business, but theater could also just be um, pretending. Um, people's agendas, people's roles that they play in life in order to advance. Um, now we come to the the final couplet, the final turn of this poem. I swear before the dawn comes around, I'll find the stable and pull out the bolt. Now here's the surprise to me. Um, in reading this, so um, we can just highlight here, um, very rough and ready here, we have the octave, we have uh, these four lines here, and we have another four lines here, uh, that brings us to eight. Um, now we ought to have um, six lines for the sestet, one, two, three, four, five. Huh. So Yeats has shorted us a line in his sonnet. You could say it's technically not a sonnet, except this is Yeats, and Yeats wrote many sonnets. We could easily be discussing one of his other sonnets. Leda and the Swan, for example, would be a um, preeminent sonnet to examine, perhaps not safe for work, not safe for YouTube, don't know, but um, uh, I wasn't going to touch that today, but uh, that's besides the point. Um, here we are with uh, a line missing. Why? Why? Not an accident. Not at all. So it fits the subject matter. It fits his what he's trying to articulate here. Uh, the fascination of what's difficult is this, this um, frustration that the speaker feels is exemplified also in this kind of abruptness or plug pulling, or even a, you could say like rage quit of the poem at the end. So this, uh, this, the speaker goes to the end, I'll find the stable and pull out the bolt, done. So after that, there's an implicit, the experienced reader of sonnets sees an implicit line, an implicit ghost line at the end we are i can't help but to seek it because the forum demands it and what do we find what do we find in this last line now you might see something or you might not and that's fine this is this is he's appealing to our imagination right so so it's it's he's using our facilities to complete the poem for him which is a kind of a spectacular idea if you think about it but we always have to do that when we read poetry. We're always demanded to be active readers. We can't be passive. We can't wait for the poem to do all the work for us. Yeats demands that we work and do what's difficult. So take a moment and do what's difficult. What happens? What does your mind naturally do? Well, we know what, what's going to happen. He doesn't pull, find the stable and pull out the bolt. He doesn't. He knows after he has vented his spleen a little bit with this exercise, we know the speaker of the poem will go back the next day and continue the battle. We know that this mission and that this um, fascinating problem of his, of, of interacting and, and collaborating with other people to do something larger than himself and aspire to something greater than just a single person working in isolation is something that ultimately, truly, and deeply fascinates 
the speaker and that they will go back. And by forcing us to do that exercise and write that last line where they, where they go back, go right back into it, right? You, you dust yourself off, you have a stiff drink, and the next day, you know, you get ready for battle again. You gear up and you go back into it because that's what it takes, man. That's what Yates is telling us. That's what it frickin' takes. A little bit of imagination and a lot of hard work from Yates. All right, thank you for joining me. That's what I have for us today. As always, I really do appreciate folks who comment, folks who subscribe. That's what makes us all worthwhile. Um, and that helps me and motivates me to make more videos and keep engaging with you guys. And that's how we can reach more people and um, cover more ground. Thanks again.